My question to you is, if the Democrats take the House, as the polls currently indicate, what do you expect to see topping the agenda of the House Financial Services Committee in the next Congress? Well, I guess you're going to force me to go there. So, one, um, unfortunately, um, not, not anything good for the economy. I mean, what we see is most likely uh, the ranking member, Maxine Waters, would huh? become the chairman yeah. should the Democrats take over. She has been leading the impeachment charge uh, in the House. She has called for the harassment of the president's administration uh, and members of his staff. Um, and so um, she's also called for breaking up banks. Um, it's not going to be a good day for the economy. Now, I assume that we will have uh, a Republican Senate. We might actually gain a seat or two, in which case it's going to be very difficult to get laws passed. Um, and so what we also know is, is that the chairman of the House Financial Services Committee has the power of subpoena. Um, Maxine Waters says. Um, more or less said there will be retribution uh, for the banks. Uh, as chairman, I've used the power of subpoena a little over once, uh, maybe one a month. Uh, my guess is she may be using five or six a day. And so, unfortunately, what you would see is the deregulatory agenda and the regulatory right-sizing that has brought us so much of this great economic growth that people are feeling in their paychecks, in their wallets, in their bank accounts, and their hope. A lot of that deregulatory effort would start to really grind down as members of the president's cabinet and the head of these uh, various agencies. Um, they're not involved in, in, in the regulatory agenda. They get involved in answering subpoenas. And so, uh, unfortunately, if you care about economic growth, uh, it'll be a bad day. If you care about impeachment and harassment, it'll be a good day. But what about bipartisanship here, Jeb? Because you yourself have understood that to get past legislation, you've had to, in some ways, make compromises. I mean, particularly the likes of your Financial Choice Act comes to mind. The fact that you had to make compromise to see any of it go through into, into legislation. Do you not think that that could be the case here? Well, I hope it would be. I just don't know it would be. I mean, you will see on many occasions where uh, Congresswoman Waters is outvoted by Democrats on her own committee. I mean, quite often she is very, very isolated. Uh, now, she's capable of legislating. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And I take great pride as chairman of the committee that I think we've passed more bipartisan legislation out of our committee than any other uh, committee in the House of Representatives. Whether she would choose to continue that, um, I just don't know. I, again, I haven't seen all, much evidence. Uh, we have been able to work on a couple of matters uh, together, but regrettably, that's been the exception and not the rule. Let's talk a little bit about your take on the president's actions on trade. You've been critical in the past on some of his actions. I want to get your take on where your thoughts stand now. Do you support the deal that the president has reached with Canada and Mexico, uh, a NAFTA 2.0, if you will? Well, I'm just glad we have an agreement because it was looking for a while like we might not have one. Uh, so, uh, apparently, we will not be voting on this in the 115th Congress, and because of that, since I will be retiring, I haven't looked at every comma and semicolon in the agreement. I think it takes a few steps forward. I think it takes a few steps backward, but I'm glad that we've kind of, at least for the moment, taken that off the table. What I applaud the president for doing is helping start to unify the world in dealing with the serial violator of the WTO, and that's China. I mean, I want to make sure China has the right to rise. I just don't want it to be at America's expense. Yeah. Uh, I, I share that concern with the president. I was very happy that the House Financial Services Committee uh, produced a bill that modernized uh, our foreign direct investment regime uh, with a lot of leadership uh, from Robert Pittenger of North Carolina. Yeah. So that's going to be an important tool, export controls. Chairman Royce of California brought that to the table. I think that's a more important tool and a more surgical tool uh, than tariffs. But I at least applaud the president now uh, for having a, a truce, I suppose, with the EU, doing an agreement with Canada and Mexico, and trying to unify the world in making sure that if China is going to benefit from the WTO, they really have to abide not only by the letter, but by the spirit of the WTO. And it's clear that they are still committed to a form of mercantilism and industrialism. Uh, and um, that, that's got to change. 
talk about a truce with the EU. What about a truce with the Federal Reserve? How have you taken some of the shots that, across the bow that have been fired at Powell of the Fed by President Trump when it's meant to be independent? Well, I don't think anything the president says is going to impinge on their independence. Last I looked, the Fed writes their own budget, and members, uh, governors, have a 14-year term. And so I don't think what the president says is necessarily uh, going to impinge on their independence. I would, would also say this. It's not something I feel a need to do to comment on every FOMC meeting. Uh, I think the president's got to be a little careful that... Uh, you know, they don't bow their back and push in the opposite direction. But yes, we want the monetary policy function of the Fed to be independent. But, the, you know, at the same time, the Fed needs to listen, and they need to listen carefully. They've got a lot of smart PhD economists, but they don't have a monopoly on them. And we need a Federal Reserve that puts out a very um, uh, uh, transparent uh, um, plan that uh, people know what the value of their money is going to be. They say it's data dependent. We need to know what that data is. We need to know what the reaction function is. And they need to listen to feedback. But clearly, they're going to be independent. Again, they write their own budget. They got 14-year terms. I, I, I just, I, I don't think that argument is a valid argument that the president's criticism uh, and I assure you, the Fed is not the only institution in America that, uh, that has received criticism from this president.